Before we get started, um, I just want to give you a little bit of background on Unbounce for anyone who hasn't worked with us before or used our, our software. Um, so Unbounce is a landing page platform for marketers. Uh, we have over 11,000 active customers who build, publish, A-B test their landing pages without any need for developers. Um, it's totally built for marketers, um, so it's meant for you to be able to build and launch your campaigns on your own and then, of course, tweak them as you learn, you know, whatever it may be. If you have insights from your PPC campaigns, you can take that information back to your to your landing pages and update them and change them. So when you're talking about personalizing your campaigns, obviously with PPC it's really important that you send your traffic to very targeted campaign specific pages and Unbounce will help you do that. Uh, if you stick around afterwards, we'll, we'll also go through a little bit of a demo, but I'll talk about that in just a sec here. Uh, one of the biggest questions we ever get any webinar ever uh, is, will the slides and the recording be available? Uh, and the answer is yes, absolutely. Particularly with content like this, like Larry's going to go through, uh, you know, quite a bit. And you know, as you're watching it today, you may think, like, oh man, I can't remember all this. Don't worry about it. You don't have to. Uh, we will send you the slides. We will send you the recording. There's nothing you have to do. You've already registered. They will be uh, in your inbox by the end of the week, as soon as we can get that stuff uh, up and encoded. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, Unbounce, we're here to help you build, publish, uh, A-B test your landing pages. Uh, you can build desktop pages, mobile responsive pages. We connect with a ton of different tools. Uh, we support dynamic keyword insertion, so you can pass these keywords in from AdWords to your landing pages to personalize your content. Uh, we will be hosting a demo afterwards, so I'd recommend you stick around to check that out. Um, but if for some reason you have to take off early and you can't stay till the very end, uh, you'll see this URL right at the bottom. Um, so unbounce.com slash try personalizing PPC campaigns with keyword insertion. Uh, and you can go check that out to get a little more information about how Unbounce can work for you. Uh, so my name is Ryan Ingley. Um, I, I was the director of customer success here at Unbounce, uh, though I've been fortunate enough, I am now our VP of customer experience. Um, so I, you know, I'm involved in pretty much anything uh, that's, that's customer facing and am also lucky enough to be able to work with people like Larry uh, where, you know, I even got to meet him last summer uh, when we hosted our conversion road trip, uh, which was really, really great. Um, so anyway, it's, you know, my responsibility to work with my team and our marketing team to ensure that we can bring amazing content like this to all of you. And really, like, the only way that we know if this content is useful for you, um, you know, if there's anything we can do to improve, if you'd like to see more of it, is if we hear back from you. Uh, so if you take a look at the bottom left, you'll see my Twitter handle there. Uh, it's at Ryan underscore Ingley. Uh, then, of course, the Unbounce Twitter handle, and then the hashtag for today's session. Please, 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 like, just hop on Twitter, send us a message, let us know either what you think of the session, uh, what you would like to see from future sessions, and, of course, if you have any questions uh, for me or for Larry today. Uh, any questions that you send in through Twitter will be vetted by our team. Uh, they're all fed over to me, and then I can ask them to Larry, um, you know, providing that they fit well with the context, and if they don't fit in during the webinar, but you send them over, we will make sure to get you an answer anyway. So if you send us a question, you will get an answer whether or not we're able to get to it in today's session, though we definitely try to get to as many questions as possible. So enough about me, enough about Unbounce. Today is all about uh, Larry. Uh, so Larry founded Wordstream. Um, he's the founder and CTO over at Wordstream. And Wordstream is a leading search marketing software service provider over on the East Coast in Boston. Uh, and they manage about $500 million in annual ad spend. So you know, if you're looking for an expert in the PPC field, like, Larry is your guy. Uh, he's one of the smartest voices in paid search. He shares his insight with millions of visitors on the Wordstream blog. He's a top contributor to Inc. Magazine, Search Engine Land, uh, Social Media Examiner. Uh, you know, there's an absolute kind of deluge of channels through which uh, Larry spreads PPC knowledge. Uh, and as I mentioned, I was fortunate enough to, enough to meet Larry last summer when we took Unbounce's Call to Action Conference on the road uh, and hosted a CTA road trip in Boston. And I can tell you, Larry is insanely smart, and we are incredibly lucky to have him with us today. Uh, so with that, I'm going to pass it over to Larry. Uh, I am going to sit back and kind of listen with all of you and get schooled on PPC. Uh, but Larry, thanks, uh, thanks so much for joining us. Awesome. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Ryan, for um, having me here today. And, and um, uh, I just wanted to say, um, you know, I can't, I can't say good enough things about um, Unbounce in terms of uh, the company and, and, and the product. And so uh, definitely if you have any needs in terms of A-B testing or, or landing page hosting or development uh, or, or um, kind of conversion rate optimization, I would certainly highly recommend 
and, and, and endorse uh, this, uh, you know, checking them out uh, to, because I think very highly of them. Um, so uh, Thanks, that means a lot, Larry. Uh, let's uh, let's get this started here. Um, can, can you are you able to see my screen here? Uh, yeah, I've got your web uh, your webcam up there, um, so I can see you, and I've got your screen down there as well. All right. Um, so I, I don't have my headset here today, but um, anyways, uh, so it looks kind of funny. Uh, but uh, basically, yes. Uh, so we're talking about uh, personalized uh, experiences today, uh, in, in terms of like uh, the ability to personalize your your uh, PVC ads uh, experiences and why why you should do that. And, and uh, I'll go through a couple examples of, of how this works and and, wh and why you should care. Uh, and so just a couple statistics here. One's from from Adobe. Uh, you know they're just saying that you know 77% think that it's pretty critical uh, to to personalize your stuff. Uh, obviously, um, you know, and 74% of consumers are kind of um, frustrated with with websites that. That don't personalize their their ads and promotions. So uh, there you have it. Uh, hopefully you don't need statistics to to convince you of this. Uh, but uh, in, in this presentation, I'm going to walk you through a, a couple uh, ideas on how you might go about uh, per personalizing your PPC because uh, the, the technology is is more powerful than ever, uh, especially in the last uh, 12 months or so in terms of the new features and functions that's been been being uh, released. So the first thing I want to talk about today has to do with um, this really cool uh, feature called Customer Match in AdWords. And uh, you know, I, this is not hyperbole. Uh, it is not a, a stretch of, of um, you know, in terms of uh, it's no exaggeration to say that this is the the biggest uh, kind of uh, evolution of AdWords, or most interesting feature in the last uh, 10 years, uh, and and what, what what's so interesting about Customer Match uh, is that uh, it's basically for the first time in the history of advertising, we're able to target ads uh, based on a specific uh, identity. Uh, so what I mean by this is uh, in search advertising, which is you know pretty powerful, uh, you're, you're you're targeting certain keywords, uh, and and um, uh, that, that's kind of a strong proxy for commercial intent, but you don't really know if we're ta targeting Ryan or if you're targeting Larry. Like, who who is the person uh, doing that search? It's still kind of anonymous. Uh, and and same same thing with remarketing. Uh, you know, you're targeting people who visited your site recently, but you don't specifically know who that person is and whether or not that individual is a qualified buyer or not. And so, it's just this new idea. This new idea is is this basic. Uh, based on identity-based uh, targeting, so targeting phone numbers or emails of specific individuals, and of course, the way that that this works is because, uh, you know, generally, like 50 plus percent of the time on the web, people are logged into one of the Google services, such as Gmail or YouTube, uh, and and if you're browsing stuff on 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 a mobile app, uh, such as uh, you know, Google Plus or something like that you're you're inherently logged in, and so it it knows who you are, uh, so so it can then tie uh, the the ads to your specific identity. Um, so, so basically, the idea here uh, in terms of um, uh, customer match is to take your existing email segmentation. So uh, your your company, uh, you know, 89% of companies do email marketing. Uh, so you probably have like a Marketo or a HubSpot or a Salesforce or something like um, or Constant Contact, where you have a bunch of lists of, of of people like you know big big customers or recent purchasers or or um, kind of abandoners or frequent customers or people with expired warranties. Like you take those same email segmentations uh, and and that you would typically shoot emails to. Uh, and instead, what you do is you just upload those emails uh, into Google AdWords and create audiences. Uh, so this is just like a, a, a dummy um, a, a kind of a list that I created. It's called all the emails, the big dumping ground. Basically, I just took a huge list of 360,000 emails. Uh, it's the list size is only 180,000. So so the reason for this is because not every email that you upload will will match to a to a Google identity. It, it's around half of them. So like. What I was saying earlier, like 50% of people are logged in to Google, and the other 50% that these emails might be personal emails or or, or, or something else. Uh, but 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 typically it's around 50%, um, and, and and that's still still very uh, positive because if you think about email marketing, your typical opens are going to be like five or 10%. So that's still leaving, you know. 90 or 95 percent of, of of people not opening it. Uh, so if, if you have a chance to get in front of 50 percent of them, uh, I, I still think that's pretty interesting. Uh, so so you just upload these emails and and then um, 
and leverage your existing segmentations, as I was talking about before. So this might require a little bit of uh, collaboration with other teams, like the team that does the, the email marketing. Just figure out what are the offers and, and, and list segmentations that they're, that they're leveraging. Uh, and then you can amplify whatever offers that, that, that they're, they're offering on email, but through paid, uh, paid uh, advertising, PPC marketing. Um, so in some ways, uh, people-based marketing, the space uh, using customer match, it, it's highly personalized, just like email marketing, but substantially better. Uh, what I mean by this is, um, think, think about, uh, uh, like if I want to do an email blast talking about some, uh, some offer, uh, even, even though I own the company, I, like if I, if I call, if I talk to my marketing director, I say like, hey Jen, can we do an email blast next week? Uh, she'll be like, uh, the next open is like you know three months from now uh, and it's like you know and, and they're, they're, they're kind of scared to like blast list too much because they're worried about unsubscribes and, and there's all these like permissions and things like this and unqualified stuff so basically it's kind of like email marketing but you don't have to worry about all the problems of email marketing in terms of like unsubscribes and and, um, and inventory etc so um, I wanted to give you a couple examples of, of how this works. Uh, this is one of our customers that's uh, doing work with Customer Match. So they're targeting a bunch of keywords, search ads basically, but um, they're using different targeting uh, mechanisms for the same set of keywords. Okay, So uh, basically the first campaign here has to do with exact and phrase match. So typically your exact and phrase match, that, that's kind of typically it's your, it's your goal because it's like very, very precise. Uh, so, you know, and, and, and look at this uh, box on the right side here where it says uh, conversion value divided by cost. That's your return on ad spend. It's kind of like for every dollar spent, how much uh, value of revenue have you created? So for every dollar spent uh, using exact and phrase match, this campaign uh, is generating six dollars and twenty eight cents uh, per per um, per dollar spent. Uh, that, that's that's pretty remarkable. Uh, but you know that uh, that that's kind of generally speaking, that would be the highest. But uh, in comparison, like the the broad match keywords, uh, which you know that those things they kind of cast a wider net, and so it matches against all sorts of sorts of junk. Uh, it's still it's still positive, like three dollars and eighty eight cents per dollar spent on advertising. That's still positive, but not as positive as exact match. I just wanted to point your attention to these two other campaigns. One is um, RLSA, so that's targeting search ads, the same keywords to people who visited the site recently. Uh, and notice how uh, the the conversion for for cost. Uh, you know, return on ad spend is five dollars and fifty-eight cents. But then look at email targeted uh, uh, tar uh, targeted campaign. Same keywords. Uh, it's, it's it's people who. Uh, have signed up for something, so customers or prospects of this e-commerce company. And here we're generating 50% more than even the branded terms, uh, $9.43 for each uh, dollar spent. So that's pretty remarkable, uh, you know, in terms of, um, you know, when I think about squeezing out like performance of, of um, you know, paid search campaigns, I, you know, I can sometimes get excited about a five or a, you know eight percent increase, but here we're talking about a 59 percent increase, which is substantially higher. Uh, and so, of course, how does this work? Uh, well, it, it works um, because uh, you know it's you're not targeting strangers; you're targeting people who are familiar with your brand. Uh, and of course, the fact that they're familiar with your brand, you can target specific uh, offers and messages because you know that it's like one of those segmentations. Maybe it's like people whose warranties expired or or something like that, uh, and you can you can customize the, the creative based on how you segmented the emails. Um, so uh, it's not just about the, the return on ad spend. When I look at those same campaigns and look at the um, conversion rates, um, obviously the conversion rates is, is an input to return on ad spend, but uh, again, it's like three times the conversion rate of a generically targeted campaign. So that the generic broad matched keywords typically converting around 11%, and here by just uh, targeting the email matched uh, things using custom creative and a custom list, uh, you're, you're tripling the conversion. And so when I think about like conversion rate optimization, you know, again, I can get very excited over, you know, 10 or 20 percent uh, increases in, in conversions, but it's rare that you are able to see, you know, 300 percent increases. And so this is one of those rare instances where, uh, you know, the targeting is just, you know, so, so important because you can, um, you can kind of customize. Basically, you have more you have certainty over who you're targeting with, with with these ads, as opposed to like, like just someone who visited your site who you don't know who it, who that person is, or someone who randomly searched on a keyword, uh, but you have no idea who that person is. Um, so, so basically. Uh, 
uh, what I'm just trying to suggest here is that um, you know knowing that this power this thing is so powerful uh, you, maybe you might want to consider upping the bids a little bit for for your um, for your more valuable uh, audiences in terms of RLSA and, and email based uh, targeted uh, campaigns um, and and um, the really cool thing about uh, this notion of, of customer match and, and search for marketing uh, if I look at you know thousands of, of, of campaigns uh, and try to come up with kind of a rule of thumb uh, customer match slash um, uh, you know, RLSA, they tend to uh, double to triple the click-through rates, as I just showed you. Uh, it, it tends to then, because because you have a higher click-through rate, that'll mean you'll have a higher quality score, so they'll actually reduce the cost per click uh, by half. Uh, so it's, it's kind of a big savings. Uh, and then, um, because these people are familiar with your brand, or perhaps they transacted with you in the past, it's, it's typically two to three times increase uh, in, in conversion rates, and so you might be thinking, well, that's really interesting. What's the catch? Uh, and there is a catch. Uh, it's a rather large catch. Uh, that it's it's basically this idea that the the conversion volume uh, is is going to be very small because you're targeting very specific people. Uh, you know where we can get you know thousands of conversions off of generically targeted keywords are uh, in RLSA and, and, and email uh, matched campaigns. It's it's you know closer to 10% of total conversion volume, uh, you know five to 10%. So so basically we're kind of Cherry picking, uh, the, kind of the the cream of the crop, if you will. So, um, so you, you, I'm not advocating to shut off, you know, your 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 um, you know primary drivers of of volume uh, of conversion volume in favor of just cherry picking a few smaller volume of, of these unicorns, like these rare and, and beautiful clicks. Uh, but but basically, what you can do, uh, and and we'll talk about this in just a second, is uh, knowing that. You know this this particular audience, this email audience, is is converting so well at such a high conversion rate and, and at, 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 at such a you know high click through rates. Wow, look at that twenty point twenty two point four one percent click through rate versus like one percent one point seven percent click through rate. So knowing that th these people uh, convert, convert at such a high rate, there's this notion of uh, something called uh, similar audiences. So you can clone the audiences, your best audiences. Uh, and and um, what Google will do is then it'll try to figure out oh well let's figure out what are all the demographic uh, kind of and, and, and search based uh, patterns of this user and, and find other people who kind of live in the similar areas have similar demographics and behaviors and, and, and search search uh, patterns and and you can find other people uh, and so that's a way of you know keeping you know a, a highly relevant audience but uh, going after a larger audience of, of people uh, this actually works fantastically well I'll give you a case study of this in just a minute but um, I wanted to uh, talk a little bit about how you can deploy the, the, this notion of customer match not only on search ads but also on Gmail ads. Uh, so, uh, Larry, yeah. can I interrupt for a quick second? Yeah, uh, of course. Um, before we uh, before we dig into Gmail and then get into a little more of this other stuff, there are a handful of really good questions just relating to um, I mean what you were going through before this. Um, yep. So I just was hoping to to fire some of those away. Um, Tony had a quick question and was wondering about. Um, the like the email targeting and is wondering is this like is it only for display remarketing or is it also for search? Like this, all of these examples that I was showing you were search. Okay. So like like it's it's basically I'm targeting keywords, uh, keyword ads, not to everyone who searches on those keywords, only for people who search on the, the keywords that I'm interested in and who appear on a list that I've uploaded. And I think that's very, very powerful because you can see here, uh, you know, the click-through rates are like, you know, 22.41%. Like, we're talking the same keywords here, uh, you know, ranging from 1% click-through rate to 22% click-through rate, just based on the fact that these people are in my database. Uh, yeah, and exactly like you said, I mean, this is like the cream of the crop of your, of your group. So they're going to be the most interested for sure. Uh, yes, uh, so so this is a this is a, is a challenge for the conversion volume. But what I'm suggesting is that you can you know 10x this conversion volume and get up to like you know 1,060 1,600 conversions or so if if you just target similar audiences. Uh, I'll right. show you how to do that in just a second. Cool, and that's a good way to expand it. And that I mean that kind of follows up the other question that I was going to ask. Um, you know, uh, Young Ping commented here and said, aren't these retargeted customers also those that we probably already paid for in the past? And I think your answer is uh, yes, but <laughs> you know, we're now remarketing them, or remarketing to them for a number of different reasons, like depending where in the funnel you're targeting them and with what kinds of campaigns. But you can also open that up to find similar people, um, which then improves the reach and finds a new audience. Is that right? 
Exactly. So, so uh, what was the person's name uh, who asked the question? Uh, I believe, I'm not sure on pronunciation, but I believe it was Young Ping. Young Ping is absolutely right. Uh, the, this is a bit of a shell game. Uh, like you would have, well, definitely, like some of these conversions you would have gotten anyways. Uh, it, they would have just been included in kind of generically matched keywords and exact and phrase match. You're kind of segmenting your best clicks out of these audiences. Uh, so if you're just running the same keywords, uh, just running the same keywords, uh, uh, but but kind of segmenting them out by by lists. I don't think that's the full benefit here. I think the full benefit is is doing the segmentation and then creating the similar audiences to create the volume. Yeah, do you follow? Yeah, that definitely expands the value um, for sure. Um, the other crazy idea that that I have is is um, uh, so social ads, all right. So ads on Facebook and Twitter, etc. They, they they tend to be very very cheap. Like I can get clicks for, for from Facebook for like you know one penny or half a penny or point one penny. Uh, and so um, what I can do is using the power of social media ads, I can promote viral content uh, and, and get like a tons, like millions of people to, to, to a website uh, using like just content marketing. Uh, and then that populates the RLSA and email based audiences. Uh, and then I can then target those people uh, later, you know, through search. Um, it, it's kind of like an indirect conversion. Uh, basically, uh, I'll be targeting those people who, who consumed my content and, and um, kind of uh, are now familiar with the brand. Uh, but even though when they first just visited my blog or whatever, they might have not been uh, kind of in, in the market for whatever it is that, that we're selling. Uh, you, you follow? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the difference between driving awareness uh, for the brand, but then once someone shows intent, it's kind of moving them through that evaluation phase uh, further right. towards hopefully a purchase. But no, that's great. Thank you for addressing those questions. Um, so, so yeah, uh, it's you know obviously search ads uh, using the lists it's for customized lists. It's pretty interesting. Uh, Google, Google also supports this capability in Gmail ads. Uh, so, as I mentioned before, uh, G, uh, email advertising is kind of a big deal. Uh, you know, 80 to 90 percent of, of companies do this, uh, and, and so um, basically, I'm, I'm sure you've seen these if you use. Gmail, it's called uh, Gmail sponsored promotions. They, they kind of show up at the top of the of, of the inbox here, uh, using these ads that are you know they look like special emails. It's just like they look like regular emails, except they have this golden badge on it. So you know it's stuck to the top of the inbox. So there's good visibility because people spend a lot of time here. Uh, and so what what you can do here is is um, you can uh, you know, you can target people who are on your email list uh, using very specific emails, uh, and 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 um, target them based on based on their emails. Uh, it, it's it's pretty interesting. So, um, you know, let me just give you uh, give you some information here. Uh, so, uh, typically, when I do this email uh, kind of um, email based targeting on Gmail ads, uh, I can get 12% click through rates. Uh, with 21 cent cost per clicks. Okay, now you gotta understand that's pretty good because, like, remember I'm saying this is an ad. Okay, uh, and 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 most like um, you know commercial emails, like maybe you can get five or ten percent open rates. Uh, you know, if you're lucky. Here, here I'm saying I, I can get like you know two times those types of open rates. Uh, and and the cost per clicks, you know, in some search verticals, you know, you could be paying five, ten, twenty dollars. Uh, here I'm just paying you know twenty cents. Uh, so so it's pretty pretty strong open rates because of the, the narrow targeting. Very good uh, cost per clicks. Uh, and 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 um, remember how I was saying Ryan uh, earlier that that you can um, you can expand your your targeting to go after similar audiences. So here's an actual example of uh, of an audience where uh, where I have the kind of the email based retargeting list uh, in, in Gmail ads, and that was giving me like a 12% click through rate and a 20 21% cost per click. Well. I cloned that audience, okay, uh, to a similar email audience, and it, it, it more than doubled the clicks, uh, and may still maintained a relatively high click-through rate, uh, and 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 uh, had a very very uh, good cost per click. So I think that that's very interesting uh, in terms of the power of, of the similar audience capabilities to to find uh, people who who have are, you know are. Uh, similar in terms of their intent and, and, and kind of what they're looking to buy and their demographics, etc. Uh, so um, uh, 
Gmail ads, like, I don't know if you read all, any of my uh, articles on CBC marketing, but basically I'm kind of a nut when it comes to quality score. It's just uh, the algorithm for, for, for uh, Google ads. Uh, but basically, um, the quality score exists in Gmail ads. I've kind of reverse engineered this secretly here. They don't actually mention it anywhere on their website. Uh, but what I can tell you is that the key to succeeding on Gmail ads is to get a high open rate, okay? Because, like, if, you, if you're promoting emails on Gmail that have very, very low, like 0.1 or 1% open rates, well then you're going to be paying like a dollar or a dollar twenty for those uh, for those opens. And then and if, if you can get the open rates closer to 12 or 15 or, or even 30%, then you're going to be paying more like 10 cents or 20 cents for those opens. And so that's you know a lot better a uh, lot lot better deal. Uh, you know we're talking like 10 times, 12 times difference. Uh, so uh, in terms of uh, you know, Brian, any any questions about uh, Gmail ads in terms of the ability to personalize experiences based on emails? Uh, no, uh, so far we're it seems like everyone's all good with Gmail. Uh, so the f final place that Google lets you uh, mess around with emails is in uh, YouTube, uh, and so you can upload these lists and target YouTube ads to individuals uh, based on their email address. Uh, and so, you know, YouTube, um, it's a lot of it is, it has to do with branding and just brand awareness. It's kind of higher final stuff, but they've recently integrated uh, shopping and, 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 and YouTube. Uh, so the shopping ads that you would typically see uh, can now show up uh, in, in, um, in YouTube ads based on remarketing and, and, and customer, uh, customer match. So, uh, so say you're like, uh, watching a, a video on Ninja Turtles or whatever the heck you 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 you, you know watch on YouTube, uh, what, what what they can do is it'll it'll play these these um, videos uh, like oh, if, if I happen to be checking out furniture on Wayfair, uh, it, it'll it'll not only show the the Wayfair video but it'll dynamically insert kind of the products that I was looking for in in like as a these are called cards uh, in in the video and and um, so we've been using this for a lot of our customers and uh, it's ridiculously powerful so like this is the in-stream customer match or remarketing. Uh, in-stream means like uh, where the video shows up like ahead of the, uh, as a pre-roll, like ahead of the um, the video that you're hoping to watch on, on video uh, on YouTube. Uh, and so <laughs> this is pretty insane. Uh, the, the average uh, conversion value, uh, the return on ad spend is 32 times. Uh, you know, here's another one where it's it's uh, you know 11 times. Now, of course, the, the challenge again is, is is the low conversion volume, but um, but this is uh, you know pretty interesting uh, in terms of uh, you know the, the metrics. And of course, we would want to clone these audiences to 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 increase the conversion volume. Um, so. So, so here you have it. It's like very high engagement rates. You know, people viewing uh, these videos. Typically, like it's it's actually the opposite. It's like you know, 93% of people will, will will not will like not like not even uh, play the video or whatever. But but here we have like you know, 50 half of people surviving to to. to um, to half of the video, 36% of the people watching three quarters of the video, and 25% of the people watching the whole video. So that's uh, pretty remarkable, uh, very high engagement, and this has to do with the fact that we've personalized the the um, the ad experience to something very very relevant to what people were actually recently looking for, uh, but based on the fact that you've actually submitted your email to a company. Uh, so. Um, all of these examples that I've been talking to you about, Ryan, were um, were shopping examples. Uh, but I wanted to just make sure that the people who do lead generation on PPC uh, know that this technology also works uh, for for lead generation people. So. It's kind of confusing though, because uh, in, 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 lead, in lead generation, like how on earth would you use uh, customer match technology uh, to, for, for lead generation? Because it, by definition, you actually have to know people's email uh, in order to use this thing. But the purpose of lead generation is, is to capture people's emails in the first place, right? So it's kind of like you know, you're kind of scratching your head and thinking like, well, how do you use customer match for lead generation? Well, basically. What you do, this is my crazy, Larry's crazy strategy for using customer match for lead generation. Basically, rather than asking people for their emails, you already have their email, right? Because like they, they 
they coughed it up and you're using it, it to, to target them. Uh, so instead of sending them back to some old form again, okay, the idea is that um, just stop asking for it. You already know who they are, okay? Uh, instead, uh, you know, typically in lead generation, there's like a funnel. Uh, it's like, you know, the person, every company has like a kind of a buying funnel. It's like the first one is awareness. Like they, they've read some white paper or consume some, some video asset or something. Uh, and then the second stage would be like some kind of a demo or some kind of a trial. And, and you know, later would be like a kind of some kind of a proposal. You know, there, there's generally like a, a series of stages uh, for lead generators in terms of like uh, stages in the funnel. It's not just like one and done. Um, and so what you do is you just segment your list based on stage of the funnel and then try to push those audiences to the next stage. So if, if it's like people who downloaded the white paper, you know, then get that list of, of emails and then push those people like not to some reg form, but rather to like to 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 a trial or or or, or, or something like or, or a demo, like something else. Uh, and 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 um, that's. Uh, kind of a, a way of reducing friction and, and kind of greasing this funnel so that more stuff uh, goes goes through. It, this is actually a kind of an interesting uh, CRO technology, even though uh, you know typically people don't think of advertising as as CRO. This absolutely will uh, you know change the velocity and, and quantity of things getting through uh, from from top to bottom. Um, so again. Uh, this is notion of uh, you, you, you take your customers, like the actual customers, the, the, the cream of the crop, the people who've bought from you, you clone those, and, and that's kind of a, a very valuable asset as well that you should be using for all of these types of marketing. So that's all I had for, for customer match. I hope um, I hope you can kind of see, Ryan, how, how I happen, happen to think that this is like the coolest change in, in, in AdWords in, in a decade in terms of targeting and, and, and I hope you can get a flavor for uh, all the different possibilities uh, that you can use this power for. Uh, any, did it, were there any questions from our, our visitors today? Uh, yeah, there, there's still a handful more. Um, I mean, I also want to make sure we're, we're good for time because I know you have a fair bit more to go through. Uh, but yeah, no, I mean with it, like right off the bat, I think you can see a lot of value obviously further down the funnel when you have someone's email address. I have been thinking about it from like a product marketing perspective uh, when you're trying to expand product usage, like so great to be able to target these people. But then with the expanded, um, like, you know, person, or excuse me, the uh, expanded audience, um, like you say, it would work really well for driving awareness. Right, right. Um, uh, you're, you're basically creating new demand for your product and then converting it. Uh, yeah. In a very, very, um, in, in ways that was just not possible before. Um, so, um, like you said, I have like three more of these hacks, and I wanted to just, you know, see if we can get through them. Um, basically, there's many, many ways to personalize your your PBC accounts, and I wanted to talk a little bit about this notion of display remarketing. Like, um, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, like, if you're doing kind of managed placements or, or um, you know keyword based uh, ad targeting I, I think that those are um, I think you're making a mistake like I really think that the, the display targeting should be based on on, on um, remarketing with overlaying demographics and interests and behaviors uh, because that's kind of the you know that's basically so much more interesting than just putting ads on on a particular website or, or a web page that has a keyword on it um, so just just to be clear here what we're talking about here is, is um, these Google Display ads, uh, the, these uh, banner ads that you see in in, um, in this website page, uh, it's kind of jokey. It's a snow emergency in South Boston. Um, uh, it's not really an emergency, but the the point is um, th those those square and banner things that's being served from Google AdWords from the Google Display Network, and so um, you know those are kind of very interesting if, if you do the targeting right in, in a personalized way, uh, and so. Um, you know the Google Display Network. We're talking, you know, two million websites here uh, in terms of their reach. Uh, you're going to hit like, a, uh, like on average, 65% of every internet user will 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 see one of the Google Display Network sites, one or more, uh, in in a given day. So that's pretty interesting um, in terms of the reach. And it's kind of like an instant unicorn manufacturing device in terms of like, like if if you tag your users, like your your web visitors, uh, you're you're going to be able to to remarket to them. Um, with, with very, very uh, great efficiency because the click-through rates will be double that of, of kind of generically targeted display ads. Uh, and, and if they do click on it, uh, on your ads, 
you can expect to see twice the conversion rates. And so what do we do with the power of display remarketing? Uh, we're going to push to the hard offers, the ones that have low conversion rates, like the you know buy the product or you know sign up for an in-home consultation or something like that, or, or, or figure out like how to get them to to trial your product or something like that. So a uh, very, very powerful way to personalize and, and huge rewards uh, for, for using this targeting mechanism. Uh, generally, um, what we're finding is that you know search is still the king in terms of uh, conversion rate uh, versus display ads. But also, so recently, what we've been seeing is that for certain verticals, uh, the the conversion rates for um, display ads are very very high uh, because uh, certain certain types of uh, industries where there's like a lot of comparison shopping or perhaps there's a lot of um, kind of uh, it requires imagery to inspire a customer like like uh, travel or something like that like you, where you might need a, a beautiful beach or something that's maybe not coming through in, in your you know 25 character text text ads uh, what we're finding is is that display plus remarketing actually convert equal or better uh, in, 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 in several of these verticals uh, and so so I wanted to give you a couple uh, tips for how to how to go about doing this uh, even even better uh, maybe something uh, non obvious as you know I'm pretty crazy obsessed about quality score <laughs> I'll wherever wherever it is I'll find it uh, but, but basically uh, Google Display Network has a quality score it's again kind of hidden they don't talk about it anywhere but we have you know a bill, you know, like half a billion dollars of ad spend so I can just do this reverse engineering stuff uh, and and what I can tell you this is word stream data not official Google data uh, just the higher the click-through rate of your ad the less you will pay uh, for these display advertising clicks and vice versa the lower the click-through rate uh, the, the much more higher it will cost uh, so you know duh, the idea here is do the display remarketing and, and get high click-through rates well how do you get high click-through rates so that you're paying like you know 30 cents instead of like three dollars for these clicks uh, well uh, the first idea is uh, is, is to uh, Use actual display ads. So look at this left ad, Red Sox Nation domination. Like it just doesn't inspire. It's not even an image ad. It's just a text ad that's been formatted as a, a square. Uh, and so what I can tell you is that 67% of display ads are actually text ads that are formatted as text squares. Uh, and so you know that's kind of a fail. Uh, you, you should be kind of doing a little bit of work to make them a little more colorful and, and have imagery and convey certain things and, and it's, it's easier than ever to do this. Uh, Google has a display ad builder where you just type in your URL and, and uh, it'll download kind of the logos and the color palette of, of, your, of your website and it'll come up with like these pre-canned display ad Im uh, images that you can use and this is like so much better than just a plain text ad. I mean it's don't get me wrong this is not perfect but it's better than just like a text ad that's formatted as an image uh, and, and so uh, another uh, interesting thing that you can do about remarketing is uh, you can be very very uh, kind of aggressive in terms of the the impression caps so like that's how often you can chase people around with these ads and people say like oh just you know don't be too too creepy stalker limited to like two or three times per day but what, what we see is that if, if you set those impression caps to unlimited and, and if people see the ad uh, you know many many times uh, you know of course the more times people see an ad the less likely they are to click on it because that's that's called ad fatigue uh, but you know if that person does click on that ad like if they've seen it many many times uh, their, their conversion rate doubles uh, so basically it's kind of like attrition it's like oh you know you got me you know like I saw this thing a hundred times and on the hundred and first time I'm like if I click on this at this point it's like I'm really gonna buy the thing like the airplane ticket or whatever it was that I was supposed to finish earlier uh, and, and the, the really reason why this is interesting is because you're only paying for the click remember it's just pay-per-click marketing so you know <laughs> the impressions are free so just go nuts um, of course uh, there's uh, tons of these display marketing products are, are in social ads but that's a different topic for today uh, but but you can also uh, combine these strategies on Facebook uh, and and I just wanted to talk a little bit about my next hack which has to do with uh, uh, new ad formats but any any thoughts or questions Ryan uh, nope so far we're we're still good uh, keep it keep it going there's a blinking thing here on the question thing okay uh, just FYI um, so so here we here we go. Um, it's uh, we're talking about my number three personalization hacks. Some, some of these new mobile ad formats. Uh, you know, there's things that you can do to make uh, make visitors more likely to convert. Uh, if, if if you uh, leverage these insanely new powerful ad formats, uh, basically. Um, 
in something like October or May of last year, the desktop uh, search was eclipsed by mobile search, uh, and, and, and basically um, there are ways that you can leverage this to to um, make people much more likely to to convert uh, using like this this notion of personalization. So just uh, Personalization can be uh, in terms of the ad formats that you're using. So, uh, shopping ads, for example, uh, this is a very interesting ad format because uh, the price and image information for this search for blue dresses is communicated to the user prior to clicking on the ad. Uh, so, if someone actually clicks on, you know, one of those designs, they're saying uh, this is the design that I'm interested in, and this is the price range that I'm interested in. And so, you're actually just taking their order at that point. Whereas the ads on the right, which don't have either prices or uh, or image, uh, you know, the, the, you're, it's this very low likelihood that you're going to find the exact match uh, in terms of price and, and style that, that the person is looking for. Uh, so using the same principle of, of, of like kind of stealing conversions using new ad formats, uh, these mobile ads are creating new app-like experiences for um, for these. Uh, uh, different vertical, like different types of searches. One of my favorites is this local inventory ads, where if you search on something like a washing machine, not only will it give you the ratings and all the kind of information, it's just almost like you're you're in an Amazon app basically. But it'll even tell you like whether or not that thing is in stock at a local store. Uh, so that's that's a pretty interesting shopping experience. Um, you know, you can bet that if, if if someone then clicks on this, uh, you know, Sears outlet in stock, uh, that there's a very, very high likelihood of buying this thing because you know they've they've been presented with so much information here uh, that that you you kind of only click on the thing at the very very last minute when you're ready to, to, to take the order. And then the same idea with, with the mobile hotel ad experiences uh, in terms of clicking to book and having the ratings information or cars. There's the ability to see, get directions to, to your dealers uh, and, and call the dealership or view different pictures and statistics about you know, about the horsepower or, or miles per gallon. Like it's, it's um, the same thing with credit cards and, and buying insurance online uh, or, or, or getting a mortgage. So just basically the Google is systematically going after every single kind of vertical search uh, and, and providing these rich app-like uh, search experiences which uh, dramatically impact um, uh, conversion rates because you've, you've created such a personalized experience in terms of all providing all the information uh, that that's that's uh, pertinent for for a purchasing uh, behavior uh, d decision prior to them uh, clicking uh, on your ad and so basically uh, what, what this is basically what we're doing is we're we're trying to m kind of muck around with the conversion rate by uh, by kind of reducing the 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 kind of the click hits to your website, but increasing the the commercial intent by kind of pre pre qualifying them, if you will. Um, so here we are. We're talking about actually, uh, Brian. Any any questions on that one? Um, yes, actually. Yeah, we have a couple of questions here, and then we also had a couple that kind of came in. Uh, right at the end when you were wrapping up the second PPC hack as well. Sure, sure um, we'll take Just on. about the, the PPC hacks. A uh, quick question from Sergio was just in regards to the conversion rates. Um, were those, I mean, a lot of the examples here are shopping. Are the conversion rates shown for B2C primarily, or do they also factor like B2B um, as well? So, you know, um, these, these particular uh, shopping examples that I'm providing are um, b to C and, and the lead generation examples that I'm providing are B2B. Uh, but, you know, I, I've seen, we've got 10,000 customers and, and I can tell you that uh, it's, it's, these are not anomalies. It's, it's like the trend is similar in terms of like you, you will expect to see, you know, half the cost per click and double the click-through rate and double okay, the, okay. the conversion rate. Um, okay, so then the, like the math kind of stays the same even if the actual like data for the, you know, the the percentage itself, or excuse me, like the the cost, cost per click, click might, yeah, yeah those change, okay. but the ratio is is, is what, what what stays the same. Okay. Um, now, in regards to uh, remarketing, um, again, like Jerry had a question, and Jerry wants to know, like, is there a recommended daily impression cap? I know you said like leave it unlimited, but like per day, you know, do you want to not be like super stocky? Um, you know, like even if you set it to like 10, uh, there's like chances are that like if you look at the frequency and view uh, impression and frequency report, like how many are you actually serving? Um, chances are it's it's only going to serve like three or four or five 
ad impression. So like, I mean, in some ways it's just like kind of like a false limit, uh, you know. So, so I'm just suggesting you just leave it uncapped, and it's unlikely to to serve you know more than ten times anyways. Um, you know, it's it's free free impressions. You know, you pay per click, right? It's not CPM based. Uh, so so no, I I, I would just set it to unlimited, and and basically Google will. Uh, I mean. <laughs> Right. If you if you've nailed the targeting, like these are the right people who who right. are very interested in in your in your products, then be aggressive and and make sure that you squeeze out like this is your low hanging fruit and get get all the conversions. Don't leave anything on the table. Now, if if if, the, if your your targeting is terrible, and you're targeting like you know. Uh, everybody in the world. Well, then, then we should talk about impression ca caps. But, but like here, here we're. This is kind of the opposite strategy. But this is people who are highly motivated. You know, they are within your, you know, your target segment. Yeah. They should be further down the funnel, like towards your, you know, through the buyer's journey. So they should be primed. Uh, yeah, and, and, and if you've done a good job at the targeting, then just don't shoot yourself in the foot by being very timid on the the impression caps. Okay, um, got it. Uh, one last quick question um, before we before we move on. Um, Amir is wondering: Is there like are, are there any kinds of limitations with sensitive lead gen? Um, for example, like medical or legal, or you know, does it not really matter? Oh yeah, there are. Um, like there are maybe 50 industries uh, that have regulations above and beyond the regulations and privacy regulations for search. Uh, that this customer match stuff has. Uh, so, for example, um, like certain types of like you know plus size clothing or um, certain types of uh, uh, medical conditions. Like there's all these um, you know 50 or so additional uh, restric restrictions. Uh, so, so it's um, you know I don't know all 50 of them. So you yet. will have to if you if you are in an area that you suspect to be like somewhat sensitive, you'll have to do your due diligence and like dig and find out what the criteria are. Yeah, and, and and like maybe the answer is like you just you run creative that's like not so obvious in terms Explicit. of like how you're, you're 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 targeting them. Like you know what I mean? Like you can still have a relevant offer, but just not uh, be like too Creepy. close over the target. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Got it. Uh, okay. Cool. So, uh, well, well, let's move along to number number four here um, because Rob. Uh, Rob commented and just said, I'm kind of struggling to equate the PPC hacks that we've seen so far uh, with unbounce and increasing conversions and message consistency. Um, but I mean, oh, yeah. I know you're going to be talking about DKI later on, so I'll let you go ahead and, and continue through these hacks. Sure. Uh, so basically, this notion is, is uh, there's a tremendous leverage in, 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 in ad copy. Um, and, and basically, uh, m most of the ads uh, are, are very, very similar. Um, you know, and, and um, Basically, I call that the AdWords jackpot in terms of um, uh, in terms of uh, being, you know, this looks like a row of of, of lucky sevens in, in Vegas. <laughs> uh, basically, uh, it's 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 very valuable, and 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 basically, we did a lot of uh, analysis of these kind of um, you know millions of ads and kind of figuring out what the, what the top one percent of ads or top point one percent of ads have in common and uh, one of the interesting ideas has to do with using emotions uh, so uh, you know think about like BuzzFeed and, and, and um, uh, you know those types of clickbaity websites they always like kind of get you to click on stuff you know somehow it's because they're messing with your emotions and so uh, this is just like an example of one of my customers where we took kind of a re regular example where it's like you know early detection survival rate is 100 percent book an appointment today and then the second one we kind of flipped it around it's still true. It's just like 15% 15, 15 of women live five years with late detection get screened. Uh, so this the second one is kind of leveraging the, the negative fear and the consequences of, of not doing an action. Uh, and guess, uh, Ryan, can you guess which one did better? You know what? Every, every time I have to guess, I am the worst. So nope, not even, not even venturing. Uh, well, it's the the this one, the scary one. The 15% of women live five years uh, with with late detection get get screened. This one generated you know something like three times the the calls as as, as the other one. So so emotions like if you want people to do things, leverage these emotions, uh, and and this works uh, because um, you know it, it's nice to to 
try and, and send out. Uh, and, and you can do this kind of strategy not only with your search ads, but also uh, in your display ads, definitely um, uh, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the display ad, uh, 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 ad, ad creation. Um, so um, basically, uh, yeah, be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys. Okay, so here, uh, oh boy, we're really low on time. I'm going to just skip through this one because um, um, because I wanted to talk about dynamic keyword insertion, which is like a very, very important technology. Uh, so dynamic keyword insertion, I'm sure you've seen this. It's like where, where you search on something and it kind of all these companies are just putting the word back in, in the ad. Uh, this actually, uh, even though... I was just previously saying it was kind of like uh, everything looks the same. Uh, nevertheless, it still works uh, pretty good. And so what do I mean by this is like I've done some analysis on these ads and like the blue curve kind of shows you like the ad performance of the of the non-VKI ads. And the red curve shows you um, the, the, the ads that have use, are using uh, dynamic keyword insertion. So like if, if you're trying to get above average or into the top 15 or even the top 5% of ads, you're more likely to get there, uh, you know, like a 95% or a 90% or an 80%, like upper middle class kind of thing in terms of your ads. Uh, it, it's relatively easy to do using a dynamic keyword insertion. So, so what's the catch? The catch is that if you're trying to be that top 1% uh, of ads, like those, those crazy unicorns that are so rare, uh, you're actually, it, it actually, you, you kind of need to, to use like a crazy ad copy that, that's getting a little bit more creative than, than DKI. But nevertheless, think of dynamic keyword insertion as kind of like a kind of an express uh, uh, ticket to upper middle class, which is generally, you know, being above average is, is still getting you you know, considerably, uh, you know, uh, very far along. And so, again, here's that quality score thing. I'm like, I'm going to find it. Uh, so the, basically the quality score, um, you know, it, it, it makes a difference because the higher the click-through rate on these ads, the, the less you pay for those costs for clicks and the lower the, the click-through rates, uh, kind of you get this penalty uh, up to 400% more for those clicks. Uh, and so it's not just about the cost per click, it's also about impression share. So for every point increase and decrease in, in the quality score, which is based on your click-through rate largely and, and, and a few other factors, uh, you can expect your ads to show, uh, you know, plus or minus for every point increase or decrease in quality score, uh, it'll change by around you know, 8 to Eight to twelve percent increase or decrease in terms of impression share. Um, so I, I, you know, I definitely I can't say anything bad about uh, the dynamic keyword insertion. It's obviously uh, a very very powerful uh, tool. Just a couple uh, tips and caveats. Just be careful of, of the char character limits. You know, just make sure that you're capitalizing everything correctly in terms of the the, the case structure. Um, you know, be careful with the trademarks. A lot of times people will get in trouble because uh, the, the dynamic keyword insertion will insert some kind of a trademark that's like you're not supposed to use competitor trademarks in um, in the ad copy uh, so that can get you in, in, in trouble um, you know tip number five here don't be eBay so that's where they just carpet bombed you know the entire English dictionary uh, you know going after every possible word um, but but um, but basically um, the, the the most important tip here is you should pair the dynamic keyword insertion uh, with Unbounce's new dynamic keyword tool, uh, which uh, kind of aligns the um, the messaging uh, on the, the landing page uh, to the messaging in the ad copy. So just providing that seamless experience from you know search to click to to landing page. And I think that's a very interesting idea because for the same reasons why it makes sense to align searches with with an ad copy, it also makes sense to to align your your landing page. Uh, uh, you know, copy uh, just to to make sure that you know you're you're serving up what they were looking for, uh, and so uh, you know I think that's very very interesting. Uh, Ryan, did you have anything you wanted to add add about this one? Um, yeah, sure. I, I I mean I will mention that for anyone who's interested, uh, Princess will be running through this afterwards uh, in the demo portion. Um, as you mentioned, it's you know it's really important to match your ad copy to search. Uh, and in this case, what we're saying is you can extend that further. You can go um, search to ad copy and then to your landing page copy as well, which obviously improves relevance, um, can improve time on page, and then improve engagement and click-through rate on the landing pages themselves. Um, because obviously, like, click-through rate on the ads isn't the be-all, end-all. You still need to make sure that you're delivering after that. Um, but I, you know, I won't get too much into it here because um, I don't want this to be... You know, I want to make sure that it's relevant for the people who are interested. Um, the one comment I would make so far as landing pages is in everything we've gone through, you know, you talked at the beginning about customer match, um, display remarketing, emotions, all of these. Um, it, it, 
depending on what your offering is and depending on the kind of campaign you're running, you will want to make sure that whatever, whatever the ad, um, when someone clicks it, that you are delivering relevant content to them. Um, no matter how highly targeted it, it is um, or how highly targeted the ad is, let's say, if someone clicks it and then they land on your homepage and your homepage doesn't match the ad that they clicked, like they're not going to engage. Um, so it is critical to have that, that post-click experience um, be cohesive. And that's what we can talk a little bit more about afterwards. Awesome. I uh, am in violent agreement with your suggestion in terms of uh, aligning uh, these campaigns. <laughs> Vi violent um, agreement. That's awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to wrap this up kind of with a couple final thoughts here. Um, you know, hopefully I've inspired you to think about uh, a couple different easy, relatively easy ways to, to personalize your, camp your, your PPC campaigns, uh, some of them uh, using new technologies that just weren't available six months ago. Uh, and and, and my, my key takeaway here is that it's easier uh, and more powerful to do this type of uh, personalization in your PPC ads. Uh, and and um, so, so you should be doing it. And the, the reason why it works is because, you know, you're going after a better audience and people can then, you know, you can, you can personalize the message based on the identity of the people. Uh, and then people will, you know, feel special and, and react and engage with those ads. Uh, so, so yeah, just hope this was a great webinar, you can go home and find your unicorns, kind of your best ideas and your best campaigns, and um, and, and, uh, and and that's all I had here. So um, Ryan, why don't, why don't you talk to the audience about Unbounce? Brilliant. Uh, Larry, thank you so much. Uh, even so for me, going through this, uh, I mean, I think about customer experience once someone has kind of signed up to trial our, our service or, you know, to continually like grow their usage and add more value over time. Um, one of our, like my big challenges is just reach, like how, how do we avoid the emails we send to people becoming noise and if we have something that has been launched that is very relevant to them, how do we get it in front of them? And particularly with the customer match stuff, like I now have so many ideas for like product marketing campaigns that we could run. This was fantastic. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thanks everyone, and it's a quite an honor to to be invited by Unbounce to talk to Unbouncers on uh, this this webinar. So I appreciate the opportunity, uh, Ryan and Unbounce team. Brilliant. Uh, well, thank you, Larry. Uh, and I will say, you know, for anyone who's interested, if you want to learn more about PPC, if you don't already follow the WordStream blog. Uh, go. That should be really like the first call to action here. Like, go check it out. Um, there's a ton of really great content uh, over there. Um, as far as the content today, um, I you know we will be sending it out afterwards. Hopefully, we get the recording up very soon. Uh, but Larry, you know what? I, I appreciate the time that you were able to spend with us. We won't worry about keeping you around anymore. I know that you have a lot to do. Um, so I, I just want to extend a really really huge thanks from you know me, everyone at Unbounce, and then the audience here. And then we'll stick around and do a bit of an Unbounce demo for the people who are interested in seeing how they can use the landing pages to further drive like higher conversions for these campaigns. So thank you. Uh Awesome. Thanks, guys. Uh, have a great afternoon. All right. I'm disconnecting. Okay, bye. Okay, sounds good. Take care, Larry.